I think we all thought those training wheels would never come off those bikes, but they were ripped off and that's where we are right now. So my name is Neil McKenzie. I am an assistive technology specialist. I work for the Sonoma County Office of Education in Sonoma County, California. My name is Barb Peterson and I'm an outreach vision consultant with the Montana School for the Deaf and the Blind. I think that as with everybody, this past year has been an extremely stressful year. Um, you know, to be honest with you, there were times when it was very hard to um, feel positive about coming to work. We didn't know what to do in the beginning. And a big focus for me, because I, I just said, okay, what could I do? Here's like things I can do right now. I've come to appreciate, I think this year more so than anything, how adaptable and resilient I think our educational system and our policymakers and teachers and students and families can be. My name is Nabiha Mujahid and I'm the sports specialist at uh, Louisiana Accessible Educational Materials. Last year, this last year, has forced us to leave our comfort zone. COVID has drastically changed the way I've executed our national programs. Any in-person planning was almost completely eliminated. Rachel Antoine, I am the manager of National Programs and Services at the Braille Institute. You know, the difference between planning our national programs while knowing it would be remote and making those tough decisions on how and when to do these programs, um, it, it's just been a huge impact in providing the same level and of services to these students while it being remote and virtual um, was a big challenge, but we made it happen. I think the last year, has really hit with uh, hit our department with the reality of how flexible we need to be. Um, we already create specific environments for our students to be able to gain access to as much as they can around them. Um, and so this last year really showed us the importance, I think for me personally, the importance of mimicking that in a home environment too. You know, educators and students who were hesitant to work with technologies, have started to embrace it. All of us have learning differences and um, unique ways of learning. We have unique learning styles and that no two individuals learn in exactly the same way. I think learn your way means allowing the students to be a voice in their education and a voice in how we do these programs. Every student does have a specific way that they prefer to learn. Um, and that's not even considering all the accommodations, that might be through play. Um, I mean, all my students are so different. Sometimes we'll be doing lessons and the pull in would be, we are trying to access a document full of, of dad jokes. And the lesson is actually navigating through a screen reader, but I have one student that he's, it doesn't matter if we're doing Google Docs, if we're doing a note taker, if the document's dad jokes, he will find a way to access it and he'll troubleshoot and everything. It's just that motivating thing. We all access information differently and we act on that information differently. And so I've learned to appreciate those differences um, and to be flexible within those differences. Educators and students are learning that technology is, is a way to help students develop self-advocacy skills and um, students are becoming more independent as they don't have to wait on hot copy braille when they can easily and like instantly um, access them and other materials through their devices. We want them to know too, like to ask for the things like when they go to college, when they're going to disability resources, like, hey, can I get a map of this? Can I like it's not out of the realm for them to have something that is accessible to them in a tactile format. I think that's like something that sometimes is missed. Like that should be available too. And not just digital, sometimes you just need that, like that tactile. Our students need to understand that they need to become good problem solvers themselves. It's an attitude that every child can learn and there isn't a child that cannot learn. And so it's important to capitalize on those strengths to encourage them to become positive learners. The more they understand how that child learns, 
um, the better it will be not only for school curriculum, but for anything they do. So we must reimagine curriculum, programs, teaching and assessment methods, and reimagine what the learning environment really looks like. We are all responsible for providing information and experiences in different formats. Everything has been offered virtually this year. And you know what? We've, we've been learning as we go and we're getting better and better at it. We've seen students who, you know, haven't always been able to participate in our programs be able to participate because they're now virtual. If you're not flexible, um, you know, and able to kind of roll with the punches sometimes, it, it can be a little, a little challenging. I hope we come out of all of these things and really take a stance of flexibility because I think we saw a lot of bad things, a lot of things that made us fall and a lot of great things that helped us to be more flexible and to kind of get up. And I think this is a perfect time to, as a whole, make education more accessible. Every child is unique. Every child brings gifts to the table and, um, you know, seek out those gifts and those talents that your children can share. And, um, and, you know, let them grow up to be happy children.